Steve Harvey come out there and do the coming. Don't trip. He ain't through with me yet or something like that. All these Christians out there laughing at this man making fun of the church. And how he talking about how he gonna try to keep it clean, but he ain't never did no hour of clean. If he ain't never did no hour of clean, what in the world is he ministering to the church for? Amen. If he, if all of his stand up, he ain't never been able to do it clean. Then why, man of God, will you bring him into the church and let him minister to the believers? And see, because we don't have the ability to discern between good and evil, we sit up there and laugh. And all the time, the enemy is infiltrating our minds. Because this great man of God has co-signed it. And if T.D. Jake says, this is okay, then it got to be okay. Mm. What does the word say? What does the word say? When the Bible says, if someone is going to teach, that that man has to walk circumspectly. That's why I always show y'all in the Bible where it says the qualifications for leadership. Everybody is not qualified to lead. I don't care how fuck, he gonna laugh you right to hell. Right on, laugh, right This thing is real, this thing is real. I see young people who walk around and they talk about they know God and they living in the streets and living ungodly and doing all kind of ungodliness and yet they say they know God. The devil is a liar, you've been deceived. You've been deceived. Just cause you say you know God don't mean you know him. <coughs> And you walking around talking about you know God, and, and, and I, I want to thank Jesus, and, and, and I want to thank uh, uh, God for blessing me with this opportunity. God didn't give you that. But yet you think that what you're doing, oh, okay, let, uh, uh, can't nobody judge me. Let God judge me. Mm. He's already judged you. He's already judged, but he's already done. Satan is already judged. It's time for the truth. Because we're going to live or die by the truth. And a lot of this stuff that we're doing is from the devil. And the enemy is after our children. He's after our marriages. He, and we're taking all this stuff from the world. Taking all this stuff from the world. And we're embracing it. We're embracing. The Lord began to deal with me just this past week. Just this past week. And I had to repent. With tears in my eyes, I had to repent. Because I have allowed some worldly things to come into my life. I don't know who was here, but um, I think it was last Sunday, Sunday school, or the Sunday before that, we was talking about the Christmas. We was talking about um, Christmas and talking about um, Easter. Easter and all that. What was that last Sunday? Yeah. Last Sunday. And I was explaining how those things are cultural things. That's the word. You know, that's a part of the word. That's a part of it. Society that we live in. Well, the Lord dealt with me about that this week. I knew what the Lord was, was putting in my spirit. And my own words condemn me. Because when I was up there, I said, one of the things I said was that the origination of the Easter egg was an ungodly teaching. And that the egg represented 
the idol god, Asherah, who had come down from heaven, who represented fertility, and the coloring of the egg was the way they worshiped the gods, that, the decoration and all that kind of stuff. That was the way they worshiped. And I said, I, I said, and we understand that, but we as Christians, we don't celebrate or worship the, um, the goddess when we do the Easter egg hunt. So the Lord said this to me, if you know that the origination of it is evil, and you know that that was the intent and design and purpose of it, why you got it in my house? That we that we that we have that mind when we do it because we don't. But what I'm saying is we know where it comes from. Right. Right. We know who toys these are. We know whose devices these are. Mm -hmm. We're not ignorant of where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So if you know where it comes from, why is it in my house? Why, you mad? Why do you have to have it? Why do you feel left out if you don't have it? Why am I not enough? Just my resurrection. Just be God and be Why is that not enough? Why you got to have that too? Think about it. That's true. That's like, that's like uh, 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 somebody that you know is a drug dealer or whatever gives money to one of your children, you're not going to let that child keep that money. You're going to tell that child, take, take him back his money. Take him back his shoe or take him back whatever it is because you don't want what he's giving you. You don't need his stuff. You don't need him because it's going to lead to something else. Leave his stuff alone. As a parent, that's what you would say. You would say, don't mess with his stuff. He's up to no good. This is just an open door for him to slide in and bring stuff. No, leave his stuff alone. So in the mindset, a spiritual mindset, if we know that, the, 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 that this thing comes from ungodliness, and we do, because all I got to do is research it and see, it comes from ungodliness. Then why? Why are we messing with it? Why we, why we got to mention it? Why we got to touch it? Why we got to bring it in the house? <coughs> why we got to do it? We allow the world to infiltrate the church. <coughs> and then wonder, and then the church break apart. The church don't accomplish anything because we got too much of the world. And a part of this apostolic authority is to reestablish order in the house of God. And there are certain things that's in the house got to be put on that side. Amen. Amen. Regardless of who get mad, who get angry, who put their lips out or whatever, if you're going to reestablish apostolic authority, there are certain things that's in the house got to be put outside the house because it don't have no business in here. And that's just real. That's just Bible. That's Bible truth right there. That you can't have revival with, 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 with idols in the house. Amen. You can't have revival. God's not going to come through and heal and deliver and move and open doors when you got idols in the house. You got to bring it out. You got to get it out. Certain things got to get out the house. It ain't got no place. We're trying to go back to God. We're trying to get his glory to descend in this place. We're trying to get a grace in this place that, that, that his word will, will, will go out, out unhindered and reach our sons. We got a mandate to reach this generation. We got to get the idols out. Yes. Be ye holy. As I hold it. Be ye holy as I hold it. And then he says, I walk <coughs> in his mm -hmm. I mean, God, I, I had tears in my eyes mm -hmm. when the Lord was whooping me. Mm -hmm. That was just this past week mm -hmm. about something that I said in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. and it was the last week or the week before. Talking about Easter. 
from the night Christmas. And, and the Lord just went off on me. How you won't understand? It's not that you don't know. You know. You know the mindset behind it. And yet you embrace it. You brought it right on in the house. You responsible for the house. I'm talking what he's saying to me. What he said. You responsible for the house. So if you allow that in the house, who do you think I'm going to judge? Right. Who's guilty? I'm guilty. Because I allowed it in the house, even though I knew that the whole mindset that the world has behind this thing is worship over false God. I couldn't do nothing but repent. And that's God to forgive me. I couldn't do nothing but repent. Because I was wrong. I was guilty. And the way he made it out to me, couldn't say that, but Lord, I'm sorry. Because I knew better. Knew better. Coming back to apostolic authority, because we're trying to get the glory of God to be in the midst of us. Not church as usual, but we want God's presence to be in the midst of us. We're going we're gonna to shift gears somewhat right now. We're going to have...